Hello and welcome. Today we are learning about objects in JavaScript. Let's get started. Let's start by looking at object syntax. Objects come in key value pairs and those pairs are in curly braces. So we define the name of an object just like we would a variable but then we use curly braces and we store that key value pair inside the curly braces. So for this example, I'll set the title there as name and then I'll set the value as Dave. So that is a key value pair. And that is our object. Just a very simple object, but it's still an object. So we can log to the console my object and we can see that. And there you see the object in the console window. However, if we want to access the value of the object uh, key, we name the key. So in this instance, we would say my object dot name. We save that and we just get Dave in the console. So let's make a little bit larger object. And as you might guess, objects can store more than just string values. We'll call this another object. And on this one, we'll go ahead and add extra lines so we can really break it out. So here's the key alive and we'll set that to a boolean of true. Uh, we'll set answer to the number 42 and then we can add hobbies. And for hobbies, we'll put an array. And for the array, we'll say uh, eat and then next element is sleep and the next element is code. And then we can even add, we'll add beverage. And for that, we can add another object. So yes, you can have nested objects. And in the morning, we'll have coffee. Whoops, I need to spell coffee right. And then in the afternoon, we'll have iced tea. And then let's, let's just look at that for now. Because we've got our console log statement down here where we uh, access the property name on the first object we created. So let's access some other properties. We can just switch that out to alive. Save that. Whoa, it's, that's on the first object. We need it on the second object now to access the alive property. There we go. And then we can access 42 in the same way by Referring to answer, we could get the value 42. We can access hobbies. Now hobbies is an array. So if we just say hobbies, we should get the full array. But if we just want to access one of the elements of the array, we have to remember how we do that with arrays and provide the index number of the specific element we want to access. And we do that in brackets like we would an array. Now, something I hadn't mentioned yet with objects, we're using dot notation as we have another object dot hobbies or dot alive or dot name or any key value that we have and then we get or, or key that we have and we get the value of that key. However, we can also use brackets instead of dot notation with uh, objects. So we could say another object and then bracket alive. Oh, now, you notice before we didn't have to use quotes with the key names. We were just saying dot alive. And of course, inside the objects, we're not using quotes on the key names. But when we use brackets to get the value from a, a key in the object, then we have to use quotes. So as I did there with alive and we get true in the console window, uh, we could do that with beverage as well. But this will give us the entire nested object, right? And so then we could say uh, morning or afternoon. And we could also do it this way. We could just say dot beverage dot morning. And we get coffee all the same. Something else that we can store in objects. Well, objects have properties. They have the key value pair. And so when we access alive or answer, we're accessing properties of our another object. But they also can have methods. And all methods are, are functions that we define within the object. 
So we'll have an anonymous function. Notice I didn't put a name after the function. I just have the name of the method like we would for a, another key in the object. This is the method name where this would be a property name. and This would be a property name, hobbies, beverage, but action is going to be a method name. So we put an anonymous function. Did not put a name after the function, just the parentheses. And in this function, we will return hello world. And I better put a semicolon there. And now on another object, we can call our action method and we get hello world in the console. What else can we do in an object? Oh yeah, we can put other information. We can refer to information from the object actually inside of a function. And by doing that, we need to use the keyword this. So now I'm going to make an object literal. You notice I have the back ticks and I'll put time for, and now I'll use the keyword this and I'll say beverage dot morning. And when I save this, you can see we get time for coffee. But the keyword this refers to the object. So then we can pull other values out of the object with the keyword this. So this function action, this method, but it's an anonymous function, of course, that when it's in an object, now we'll refer to it as a method. So the method action of another object returns time for whatever our morning beverage is. Okay, let's create a different object now. We'll get rid of this and we'll start with an object named vehicle. And we're going to set that to a simple, uh, well, a simple object overall, a couple of uh, key value pairs. We'll have wheels are four and then we'll set engine equal to an anonymous function and this will return room. And that is our object for vehicle. Now that is a fairly generic object. And so we don't have much to do with that, but let's go ahead and create another object, but we'll do this in a new way. We'll set an, an object named trunk and we'll set it trunk truck equal to object.create and inside that object.create, we will pass in our vehicle object. So now we're using vehicle, the, the generic vehicle object as a constructor for our truck object. And we're basing that truck object off of the already uh, created vehicle object. And now we'll use truck and we'll use dot notation and I wanna add a property to truck. So I'll say doors equals two. Now when I log truck to the console, we should only see our value for doors. Yes, there is our object in the console, doors and two. But here's something that you might not expect. I can also say truck and access the wheels property. And it says wheels, there's four. I can also say console log and put in truck and access the engine method. And that is because we're using a thing called inheritance. We are inheriting the property wheels and the method engine from the generic vehicle object. And then we are creating a truck object based on that vehicle object. And by doing so, truck inherits the properties and methods of vehicle. And then we've added our own property to truck as well. So truck also has two doors. We can create another one, let's say car, and we'll set that with object.create also. And we'll put in the vehicle object, the generic vehicle object. And then for car, we'll say car doors equals four, and then we could even say car engine, if I could spell car engine equals, and we'll set a new anonymous function and we'll return, uh, let's go whoosh. There we go. 
And now when we log car, we'll log car, um, well, let's log car. We've got the wheels, we've got engine. So yeah, let's log the engine method, if I could spell again. And I'll save this. And there we've got still the truck in the log. We've got the truck wheels, the truck engine. And then at the end, we've got the car engine because we actually overwrote the inherited method from the vehicle uh, constructor where we created our uh, car object based on the generic vehicle object. But car would, if we wanted to check, car would still have four wheels as it's inherited from the vehicle object. Let's go ahead and delete our truck object and the console logs for the truck. We'll keep the car object and we'll create one more uh, object and this time we'll call it Tesla, which is more specific. That's a specific type of car. Say object.create and in this object.create we'll pass in the car object instead of the vehicle object. The car object has already inherited the properties and methods of the vehicle object. And now we're creating a Tesla based on the car object. That is the constructor for the Tesla object. And now this Tesla object, if we log to the console, should have wheels, just like the car inherited from the vehicle object. There we go, we've got also car engine and car wheels logging to the console. And now a Tesla should be a little quieter, but let's see what the Tesla engine method sends to the console. It sends the same method that we set for car, and that's because it's based on the car object, but we can change that because we would expect a Tesla to be a little quieter. So we'll set tesla.engine equal to an anonymous function. And this anonymous function should return shush, a little quiet sound. And now we'll need to log that to the console. Oh, we've already got it logged to the console. What am I doing? There we go. Save that. And we have got, oh, of course, I need to log it to the console after we set the method. And now we've got shush logged to the console. So you can see how inheritance works. That's how we've passed along wheels from vehicle down to car and from car down to Tesla. Okay, let's remove our vehicle objects and we will start at the top with a band object. And here, let's see if you recognize the band, one of the greatest of all time, in my opinion. We will log uh, all of the keys of the band object. Let's do that. So we start with object.keys and we pass in our object. When I save this, you can see we get all of the keys of the band object and that's vocals, guitar, bass, and drums. Those are the keys. Now let's log all of the values. And as you might expect, that's object.values and we pass in the band object. And there we get Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham. There is a different kind of loop when we have covered for loops. We've had while loops, do while loops, but there is a different kind of loop that helps us go through an object. And it actually is a for loop, but it's not a type of for loop we had previously covered in other videos. This is the for in loop. So let's say the keys for a band, we would describe all of those in one group as jobs. So we will define our variable as let job and then in band, so that reads well, let job in band. And then as we iterate through our object, we want to log the values of the object. So we'll say console.log and now we'll name the object and in the brackets where an array refers to the position, an object needs the name of the key. So in this instance, we'll use job. And when you're pro programmatically referring to the keys, uh, like we are here, 
uh, you have to use brackets. We can't say dot job because then it would look for that specific name. This, this way it will iterate through each of the objects. So band bracket job should do the job for us. Ah, pun there. Let's save this. And there we go. We've got Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham each on their own line. Now let's go ahead and change this just a little bit so we can also see how to get the keys out of that. So in this statement, we'll say on, and then we'll refer to job, which is the key, comma, and then we'll say it's, and then we'll have the value, which is the band member name. And we'll put an exclamation mark and end our template literal string there with another backtick, because this isn't just a normal string, this is the kind a template literal where we ab actually access uh, values and put them right inside the string. So now when I save this, you can see we get the statements. On vocals, it's Robert Plant. On guitar, it's Jimmy Page. So we're accessing the values from the key position and from the value position in the object by doing a for in loop. Okay, we'll start before the console log statements here. And we have discussed how to add values, add properties even, uh, to an object. We've also discussed how to add methods, and, and you've seen examples of that where I just do that with dot notation. So if I wanted to add a keyboard player to this awesome band, which I wouldn't do unless they wanted to do, um, I would say band.keyboards equals. So I could type that out, for example, and set a value, which they did not have a keyboard player, so I won't set a value. Or if I wanted to add a method, that would be band.start, and then we would set a value that was an anonymous function, and that's how we would do that. But what if we want to delete an existing property or method? We actually just use the keyword delete and say band.drums, and then there will no longer be a drum property. And we can also check for properties if we, we say console log, just so we can see the outcome here. And I can say band dot has own property, and this will return a Boolean. So then if I put drums, which I need to refer to once again with quotes, uh, then this will return a Boolean. So first we'll delete the, the drums property from the band, and then we will check to see if it has the property. And then I'll go ahead and leave in these other log statements that we already have. So at the very top, you can see we've deleted drums. And now when we check for drums, it's false. Then when we log the keys of the band to the console, there's only three instead of four now. Likewise, there's only three band members. And there's only three introductions as we go through the for in loop. Let's delete everything below our band object. And let's talk about destructuring objects, which is something that's a little bit different. Destructuring objects, almost put uh, structuring again. There we go, destructuring objects. And this is just a little bit different than anything we may have done or anything you may have seen before, because in this instance, we're going to define variables, but we'll do that by naming the key in the object that we want to pull the variable from and then I'll say my variable, which will be the variable name. And then we'll put the equal sign and put the full name of the object. So just so you understand this line of code, we're defining my variable and we're pulling the value of the key guitar out of the object. So my variable, when we log that to the console, should have Jimmy Page. And that is exactly what we get into the console. And we could do that with more than one value at a time. So we could also put base, and for lack of a better variable name, I'll just put my base, and then we'll go ahead and log that to the console as well. And you can see in one line of code, we define two variables from our band object by doing that. Now, this is kind of cool because when you're destructuring, you can also kind of avoid this extra syntax if you just want to go ahead 
and name the variables the same name as they are uh, referred to by their keys. So we're going to actually name the variables after the keys in the band object. So now I'm going to have a vocals variable, a guitar variable, and a bass variable, and a drums variable. And I'll just log a couple of those. I'll log guitar. We should still get Jimmy Page. And I'll go ahead and put vocals. And we should get Robert Plant. Now that's a little different than anything you may have seen before, and it could be just a little hard to wrap your head around. But once again, we've got the full band object. And now when we're just destructuring this object, we are creating four new variables. And we named those variables uh, the exact same things they're referred to as in the object. And that let us create four new variables named vocals, guitar, bass, and drums. And we could also do this when we pass these values into a function. And that's what makes destructuring uh, pretty awesome sometimes because we could pass in a lot of different values that are held within an object but then all we have to do with the function is pass in the function name. So let's define our function and we'll say our function is sings. And now in the definition, I'm going to tell it I expect a value for vocals coming out of an object. Now vocals is specifically referring to an object key in the key value pair. I can't just make this up and say person or something else like I would normally when I create a function. I have to be, when I'm destructuring, referring to a specific uh, key that I expect to come in from an object. And now this object, or <laughs> this object, this function can return, and I'll just say uh, vocals, and then I'll put sings. It works for me. And now we'll log this to the console and we'll just call sings. And now you'll notice I just pass in band, which is the full object, but it's going to destructure that object and just pull out the vocals value. So now when I log this to the console, and I'll go ahead and get rid of these console logs, I'll even I'll get rid of this entire uh, block of code there because. I want you to understand that even without that, without defining any of those previous variables, we've just defined a function now and we're basing it off of our band object. I am pulling the vocals right out of the object, the vocals value, when I call sings and pass in the full object. And now I've got Robert Plant sings. Pretty cool, huh? Hi, I'm Dave and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.